Ian uh, Snit said when he told you you were not going to the six, you said, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> did you really think you were going to go out in the six? And how bad did you want it? Yeah, no, obviously you want the, you want the chance to compete, and, and especially on the biggest stage like this is. But, um, yeah, I knew he wasn't going to budge. Um, you know, it's, it, it's hard to. You know, you got guys like Matt Sick and Minter and Luke and, and Will at the back end coming in. It's uh, – you know, you can't blame him for going to those guys. Those guys, you know, time in and time out, get it done. So, um, you know, and they did it again tonight. Uh, Mark, on your Ian, right. did you know going after that fifth inning, knowing that their top of their lineup was coming up again, that Snit was going to say that? Uh, no, I, I thought that, uh, I don't know, you always, you know, you get that adrenaline after getting the last out of the inning. Um, and and I, I felt good. And, you know, you, you feel good about it coming coming off the field. You know, once you sit there for a little bit, maybe reality starts kicking a little bit more. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I thought there was a chance that I could stay in, but, um, you know, I think when, when you have a chance to get to, to those guys at the back end, uh, you, you can't hesitate. Uh, Gabe in the third row, then Dave. Yeah, Ian, everyone's always raving about your maturity. Luke Jackson said you're like a 65-year-old. I mean, where does that come from? Um, I, I don't, yeah, I, don't, I guess you could say my parents. I don't know. I guess, uh, you know, they kind of raised me and my three brothers that way. Uh, I, I feel like we're all kind of – old souls and you know just kind of take things in stride and um you know just just kind of go with the flow pretty easy going and i, I think that helps uh kind of slow everything down uh, dave in the fourth row ian what else can you attribute your st rather stunning success in two postseasons now eight nine starts whatever it is uh the low ones era how, how how have you been able to take your game kind of to that level on a consistent basis in the postseason yeah i mean i think you got to look to my right here um you know, he's caught every single one of my postseason uh, outings. So, um, you know, we've we've had a good game plan going in. Um, and I, I think for the most part, we've been able to execute. Um, I think the biggest thing tonight, why, why we had some success, was just the, you know, we never really gave in. There were definitely some counts that were in their favor. And, you know, I, I think we just kept making pitches. You know, he stuck with some of the pitches that, uh, you know, I was spiking up there or, or didn't quite have a feel for. And, uh, you know, we were able to make some some big-time pitches when it mattered. Charles and Sickrow, then Mark. Knowing that uh, this team plans to have back-to-back -back bullpen games in the next two games of this series, did, did that put any extra uh, pressure on you to, to go deep into this game? And then can you comment on how you feel this team is equipped to handle back-to-back -back bullpen games? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's definitely something. You know, me and Max kind of talked about it when Charlie went down. It's, you know, you want to get out there and, and give the team innings. I think that, you know, your mindset changes a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, Losing game two, we, we wanted the, the focus to be on putting zeros up and however many innings that was for. You know, that was kind of what I was thinking. Um, but, yeah, I think the, the bullpen, I, I think the way that our offense is, um, you know, they're, they're not going to stay down for, for too long. And so, um, you know, I, I think we're in a good spot going, going into games uh, four and five. Uh, Mark on the right. Uh, so both of you, Ian, what, it's not very often that a starting pitcher goes away, goes back in the dugout to watch this bullpen try to finish up a no hitter. What was your reaction when when the hit fell? And then for Travis, it's a one nothing game and tying runs now on base. Do you have to sort of just deal with like, okay, we don't really care about the no hitter. We have to get through this inning. Is there, is there any sort of uh, you know cross thoughts in your head about the disappointment of the, of the no hitter being gone and yet you know being where the game was? Yeah, I think you kind of nailed it. I think uh, you know being such a close game in the postseason, you you switch immediately to. You know how can we keep that guy where he is and, and get out of the inning? So, um, yeah, I, I always love going out and watching watching those guys do their thing, and uh, especially in the postseason. Uh, Tyler in the far back on the oh, right. Oh, oh, he had a oh. two part. Oh, I apologize. Um, <laughs> the goal of every game is is to get a win. Um, I think a no hitter would have been a bonus, but when they got that hit, it, you know that, that wasn't our goal when the game started. It was just to go out there, execute pitches, get outs, and 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 with a win, and, and that's ultimately what we did. Uh, Tyler in the back. Ian, when was the last time you did pitch a no-hitter? I think it was in double-A. I, uh, I think I had seven no-hit innings. And then, uh, you know, one of, one of my good buddies at the time, Jeremy Walker, came in and finished it off. So I want to say it was against Jackson. Yeah, Jackson maybe, the Diamondbacks. Have you pitched a complete game no-hitter, maybe high school or mm, anywhere? Or? No, I don't think I ever have. Really? I do not think I ever have. So. We'll go to Joel and then Jason. I have it. You <laughs> have really. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, I pitched four innings, and my buddy pitched the rest of the three innings. High school. High school. There you go. Nice. Yeah. 
Uh, Joel on your right, guys. Ian, you're, you're handling this remarkably well. I'm just wondering, is there no part of you that is, I had five no-hit innings in a World <laughs> Series game. It would have been nice to see how far I could go with that. Yeah, there is. Um, you know, I think I'm still kind of processing a little, it a little bit. Um, you know, because when you're in the moment, you're, you're just focused on getting outs and, you know, getting three outs, heading back in the dugout, coming back out, getting three more outs. So, um, you know, I think I'll look back on it tomorrow maybe or, or whenever the time may be. But, um, yeah, we still have some work to do. So I think that's kind of the, where the focus heads. Uh, right corner. Oh, yeah, Travis, <clears throat> a bit of a um, roller coaster day for you, maybe. Uh, a couple of at bats uh, with, with guys left on base, and then the, the double early, the home run late. Uh, just, just, uh, and then the, the throwing error, uh, just a lot of action, I guess, for you. Can you kind of walk us through the emotions of the day as well as almost catching a no header in the World Series? Um, well, I woke up and got donuts with my family. Um, <laughs> so I was feeling pretty good from when I woke up. Um, and I just try to stay calm, calm the whole day until the game starts. You know, it, there's a lot of pressure that could come um, just thinking that you're in a World Series game. So, um, you know, I just try to stay calm and, and take it pitch by pitch. You know, if, if I get a hit, cool. If I get it out, whatever, it's, it's more about catching a winner. And just the home run in the eighth, how, you know, how big was that? Just to, oh, that's to, huge yeah. to be up 2-0 instead of 1-0 going into the ninth against that team. I mean, they, they won their division. They're, they're, they have an explosive offense. Like Riley said, in one swing in the bat, they could put up two, three, four runs. So... It was huge to have that extra insurance run. Uh, Scott on the right. Uh, Travis, you, you bounced around a fair amount in your career. <clears throat> Do you feel like you found a home in Atlanta? And then secondly, what kind of donuts did you get this morning and what kind's your favorite? Um, yes, I love, I love the city. They've treated my family and me very well. Um, I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, I even had an opportunity to come here with Alex, so um, yes, I love it here. And I actually got, we got 15 donuts, you know, we got a bunch of chocolate bars, chocolate twists, cinnamon twists, cinnamon rolls, apple fritter, um, a lot of donut holes. Um, yeah, yeah, it was good too, it was good. Go Steve in the second row. Uh, so Ian, uh, they, they call you the 65-year-old old, so mature beyond your years. So with that in mind and the fact that the result is what you wanted. Was it the right move to uh, remove you from the game when it happened? Yeah, I think, you know, like I said, I think, uh, you know, kind of the, the way the playoffs have been played and managed, I think, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, you can't fault Snit for making that move. Um, like I said, those, those guys post every time, so you, you got to have the, the utmost trust in them. And, and uh, you know, ultimately those are the guys that are going to, you know, get, get this thing done, so. Yeah, probably. And, then, you know, maybe I will manage one day, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's something to think about. Okay. James on your left. So, Travis, I was going to ask you about the donuts, but so what I already did. So, oh, okay. uh, are you using Jock Peterson's bat? And is that a, like good luck charm? Did you use that same bat in, with the Homer in Houston? Yeah. So, yeah. Is, is it a good luck charm, I guess? Or why, uh, are, you, why are you using that bat? I'm going to keep using it. Okay. That's for sure. Um, I picked it up. I said, Jock, this feels pretty good. And he said, it's yours, big guy. I said, all right, I'm going to use it. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm going to keep using it. And just further removed from the thumb injury, do you f feel stronger as more time goes on like at the plate? Is, do, you, do you feel that? Yeah. Oh, you mean with the uh, injury I had yeah. earlier? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, as, time go as time's been going on, I feel stronger. We'll stay on your left, guys. With so much, this is for you, Travis, with so much talk about how often the bullpen is being used, how does that impact how you game plan, um, just knowing how often the relievers are going to be called upon? Um, well, it's not, it's not just me doing the game planning. You know, we have a, a team of guys in there, Sal, Eddie, um, Adam. Um, there's a lot of us that come in there and come up with situations that could possibly come up with the game, like, if Minter has to face a certain string of three guys, four guys, we talk about that. Or if Jax comes in and faces those three, four guys, like we go through different game plans and different situations depending on what time of the game it is. You know, there's a lot of different factors, but we we try to go over everything. And um, so when it when it happens in the game, like I've already prepped, we've all already prepped for it. We'll do three more far back on your right. Uh, Ian, could you recount the entire exchange you had with your manager there from maybe starting with the moment that you saw him coming your way? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he, you know, we're, we're, we're very fortunate to have him and, and the way he treats us is 
phenomenal. I mean, he'll, he'll shake your hand after every outing, uh, good or bad, and, and that, that goes a long way. So, um, you know, you always look for it. But, um, yeah, you know, he, he walked out down and, um, you know, said that's it, you know, heck of a job. And, um, you know, yeah, you, you, you feel a little bit of, you know, I have more to give. But, um, you know, it, it's something that you understand and, and move forward. So. Not far back on your left, Ryan. Ian, is the, the Astros' Dusty called you effectively wild today, and Bregman said it was hard to kind of get a bead when you're working in and out of the zone. Is it a different feeling pitching when you're in a game like that than maybe if you're just throwing strike after strike? Is it a different approach when you're on the mound? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I think that effectively wild is a pretty good term. Uh, it's definitely a little amped up there at the beginning, and um, – you know, I, I think that's kind of what happens when, when you try to, you know, make quality pitches, you know, every pitch, not just, you know, give in or, or lay the ball in there. And, and they have a good offense. So it's kind of something where, you know, we kind of went into the game thinking we're going to make pitchers pitches and, you know, see how far that gets us. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, you know, moving the ball around, changing speeds, um, getting some curveballs in there was big. So uh, it, it, was, it was partially part of the game plan going in. And a little bit further back on your right, Emma? This was only the third time all year that the Astros were shut out on two or fewer hits. Travis, from behind the plate, was there anything in particular you saw that was able to keep them off balance all night from the pitching staff? Um, yeah, my pitching staff is is full of studs. Um, they were just out there executing executing pitches, and um, you know we stuck with our game plan, and and we were successful with that. And we'll finish up with Barry. We'll get a microphone up front. Hey guys, Travis, uh, I remember you well in the 2015 World Series. You, you had a hell of a pitching staff there. You Now it's six years later, you're back. What do you take out of that? And Is there anything similar? You're also off to a much better start offensively than you had in that series. Um, I don't like comparing teams. Um, both staffs were great. Um, both starters were great. Both bullpens were great. Um, from from what I learned in 2015 is that it's still baseball. Um, don't let the lights get too bright. Just go out there and play your game and do what you've been doing all year with the focus of just try to win the series. Um, can't really control more than that, um, and that's what I learned. Is it more fun to be back here a second time? Oh, any time in playoffs is fun, um, especially especially in the World Series. You know, I'm just thankful that I had a, a, an opportunity to come back.